continue on to math point 14 property of circles and this is a chapter on everything about circles uh, let's go over some of the properties and terms and equations first before we come back and do these practice questions a equation the equation of a circle always looks like this and you can kind of memorize um, how this looks like even though we'll also talk about how you don't actually really need to memorize anything for the digital SAT test. So it's x minus a squared, there's a square here, I'm going to add that later, plus y minus b squared equals r squared. So there's a squared, squared, and squared. And what do they mean? I'm going to write them here. The a is the x coordinate of the center of the circle and B is the Y coordinate of the center of the circle and R is the radius of the circle so if you have an equation that looks nicely like this X minus 1 squared plus Y minus 2 squared equals 3 squared then based on what I said here, x minus a, the a is the center of the circle, the x coordinate of the center of the circle. Here I have x minus 1, so the a is 1, that means I have a center of the circle on x equals 1. And then here, same y minus b, so the b is 2, so the center of the circle is at here, 1 comma 2. And the number here, this r squared, is the radius, so the radius is 3. That means we have a circle that looks like this, with the radius of three. And we can verify that by plugging it into a calculator. x minus one squared plus y minus two squared equals three squared. And this is exactly like this. Can add a few lines here so that it looks better. Um, minor grid lines and can add the steps to be one no minor grid lines there there it is okay and on the SAT you when you see an equation and if you're not sure whether that equation falls under this uh, this format then why not just plug into a calculator and you can find out so it's number one here x minus one times x minus one uh, x minus 1, yeah, x minus 1 times x minus 1 equals 25. Is that a circle? If you're not sure, then you plug that into the calculator equals 25, and you can see, nope, it's two straight lines, it's not a circle. And you basically do that. Whenever you see an equation, plug it in and see if it's a circle. Okay, so we'll move on uh, to do the terminology. When you have a straight line like this, then this straight line here is called a chord even though you may not see this as often it'll just say what is the length of AC well you probably won't see this word chord and if it's on the side this then it's called the arc and the smaller arc so when you have two points here A and C with two points you can form two different arcs you can form the small arc here and the big arc here the small arc is called a minor arc and the big arc here is the major arc. However, this is also something you don't have to worry so much about on the SAT because on the SAT it will tell you, uh, if it tells you what is arc AC, it would just assume that it's always the minor arc, so it's always that one. And if it's the, long, the big one, there will be another point here, let's say D, and it will say arc ADC. So otherwise, it's going to be the just the short, the minor arc. That's the one that SAT goes for when they use the word arc. Next is lines BC and OC. So I'm talking about BC and OC here, these two lines. And these two lines are formed by a random point outside of the circle. Then you connect that point, point B, to the side of the circle only once, like that. And then from that point here, there's a point here, 
uh, in, in this drawing, the point is right here. And then this line is drawn from the center of the circle to the side of, to the point where this line intersects. This line, even though this, this is not really drawn to scale, but this angle here formed by these two lines is always going to be perpendicular. Always. It doesn't matter where the point is. So the, if, I, if I have another point, let's say now the point is over here, then this point will, I can draw a line from the, cir the circle to this point. And this, this line has to be tangent to the circle. What that means is if I draw a line like this, and this line doesn't work. Tangent means the line, if I extend this line on and on and on, I'll still only touch the circle once. If I'm looking at this point here, uh, move this point here. If I'm looking at this point here, uh, extend this line, it's going to touch the circle here once and then twice. So this point is not it for the tangent of this point. The tangent of this point will be at somewhere here. If I draw the straight line, it will be the point right here. I'll use a different color also to make things more clear. For the blue line and the blue dot, if I draw a line here from the center of the circle to the side, this will again be a right angle, perpendicular. And next, lines A, B, and B, C. These are lines that are formed by any random point on outside of the circle and then draw two tangent lines. So here I have one line here, and here I have another line here. These two lines, and these are the points that touches the circle. These two lines, A, B, and B, C, are going to be the same, which is called congruent in math. The same in terms of length. That works for, again, any point. So if I'm going for this, big po uh, red point here, then this line here, the length of from this point to this point here, and the length of from the same point to uh, over here, so it's right here, to this point here, these two lines are also going to be the same length. Or you can imagine that there's like a horizontal, uh, a line cutting across here, and these are like mirror images, one on the left, one on the right, okay? And these are going to be the same length. And the last thing you need to remember about circles and property of circles is that the angle, so maybe you can put this as the sixth point that's not written in the textbook originally, but it comes up very often when you see circles on the test. The sixth point is the arc and the um, area. formed by the, um, we can call that the pizza shape, um, the area formed by the arc and the center of the circle. Uh, what this means is if I'm looking at this shape here, then I'm talking about the arc, so A, C arc, and the area formed by the arc and the center of the circle, I'm talking about this, this shaded region here, this part, okay? The area, uh, the the arc, and the area formed by the arc and the center of the circle are both proportional to the angle, interior angle formed to the interior angle. What that means is, if say this angle here is one third of the whole circle, then that means this arc here is also one third of the whole circle of the circumference. And the area here, this area, will also be one third of the entire circle. And similarly, that holds for if you're just looking at the arc and the area, um, all three of these are proportional to the entire circle. Um, or so maybe this should be they are they're not proportional yeah they're proportional to the interior to the interior angle um, if if you understand what that logic what point I'm trying to get across then 
whatever the wording here may be fine. And on the SAT, you see a lot of these uh, proportional questions. It'll say if like if this angle is 110 degrees, and you're given the 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 arc length, then what is the entire circumference of the circle? Um, that's about arc, the length of the arc, the area formed by the the the, the pizza shape, and the um, angle inside. You see that all the time in the SAT. Okay, now let's come back to the beginning and let's go over a few questions about circles. Oh, by the way, if you don't remember the equation for some uh, for circles and spheres, you'll see those in the reference table. Um, on the test, you click on the reference button and you can see there are area, circumference of the circle. You have a, a circular um, cylinder um, and you have a circular prism. And, and sphere. These are the formulas are here. Let's take a look at number one here. The diagram above represents this person's concept of space surrounding a person defined by four non overlapping regions. So we have one region, two region, three, four. Intimate space is the region inside a circle radius one foot. So the inside is labeled intimate space, already labeled for you, and there's a radius of one foot. So you should probably label that on the graph. There is one foot, and we put one, assuming that the unit is always going to be feet. There's, that's one, a radius of one. And personal space is the region within the circle of radius four, but outside the intimate space. So you have this region, this area here, but doesn't count the personal, uh, the intimate space inside. I'm gonna use a different color, let's use blue. This circle with a radius of four is, um, what is it, personal space. And then there is social space, the region within a circle radius 12 feet. So we have now another radius. Use orange here. And this is 12 feet the area inside the orange circle, but not counting the areas inside, is the uh, personal, the social space. And then lastly, public space, the region within a circle of radius 25, but outside the social space. So this is social space, it's outside of the social space, but inside the big public space. So this here is purple, and this is 25. Feet. What is the area of the shaded region representing the person's social space? So you're going back to this, you see that social space is here. It's this this region here, which is I should make that ooh, cool. I should make that orange because I use orange to represent the radius of the the uh, social space. So the social space has a area of this big, it's the basically the area of this circle. If you look at the drawing here, the original drawing, you can probably see that the area of this whole thing, but it says, but not counting the so the personal space inside, not counting this part. It's blue. It really is just the area of this minus the area of this, and you have what's here the the uh, the red circle, but the red circle with the orange um, perimeter. So, if you do the math, the math is this the area of this minus the area of this, and the area of the orange circle, this big one, is pi times r radius is twelve squared. Here it says area, so minus pi r squared, and the radius of this smaller circle here, the one with the blue radius, is 4. So minus pi r squared, and I'm left with this. And if you look at the choices, the choices all have the pi in it. So I don't want the pi calculated out. 
I want to take out the pi from this expression. So I take that number and I divide that by pi. So it's 128 pi and that's the answer. Now here a right circular cone. Cone is like ice cream cone. It looks like this and then it looks like looks like that. Has a volume of 24 pi cubic inches. If the height of the cone is 12, 2 inches, so it's good to draw the graph. This is 2 inches. And it's asking for what is the radius of the base of the cone. This is the base of the cone. It's asking for what is this purple line. This is just applying the formula that we're already given at the very top. It should be pretty straightforward. The formula given at the top for a cone, which you can see in the reference sheet, is volume equals radius one third pi r square h. One third pi r square h. Going back to our question then. The volume this one. The volume is one third pi r square h. And we have the h here being two. It tells you the volume is 24 pi cubic inches. So you have this now. And we can cross out pi on both sides. So now we're left with that. And then we can multiply 3 on both sides or divide by 1 third on both sides to get 72 and that gets rid of this. And we can then divide by 2 on both sides so that gets us 36. And it asks for what is the radius. So if radius square is this then square root of radius will be 6. What I did there toward the end is just pure calculation from the equation. So once you get this equation, you're all set. You can do the find the expression by yourself, but you can also use a calculator. You can type this into the calculator. Type 24 pi cubic feet equals 1 third pi and so on. And once you type everything out, you can look at the the graph and you'll see on at x equals 6 there will be a vertical line. Then that means uh, x equals 6. Um, let's do... I'll skip this one for you to do. I'll do this one because it's different. It has a sphere. The sphere has a center O and a diameter AB. The length of AB is 6. So it says this whole thing is 6. We should label that. That is 6. What is the volume of the sphere? The volume is the formula at the very top in the reference sheet is 4 over 3 pi r cube 4 over 3 pi r cube go back to that question 4 over 3 pi r cube and the only thing you don't know yet is the radius, but you know the diameter is 6, and radius is just half of this. It's half the length of the diameter, so that, that would be 3. And solving the number will get you the right answer. Let's take a look at maybe one more. Um, I'll, let's, do, let's do this one, number 6. The center of the circle is at 0, 0. We should put a point here to show that that's the center. The circle has a radius of 1, so that means from here to here is 1. should label that too. What is the y coordinate of the point shown? So you have this point here, and you're trying to find what y is. Know that if you're doing circles, it's either a question about circle, so it's about like arc, about radius, about area, or if it's on a coordinate, then it's very likely um, a question about distance formula or Pythagorean's theorem. It has a radius and this is the radius of the circle. The hint or the insight that you need to do this question is realizing that if you draw the radius of the circle and you just 
draw a line, a perpendicular line from the point to the x-axis. Then here, you have a triangle. And what's special about this triangle is because this is a perpendicular line and this is a horizontal line, this angle is a right angle. And because this is a radius of the circle, radius of the circle is always the same length wherever it is. So if it's one here, then it's also one here. So this is one. And this point here, negative one fourth over uh, negative one fourth comma y means this distance here is one over four. Is that enough for you to figure out the rest? Why is this height here? And why is you you can use the Pythagoras theorem a square plus b square equals c square to find the value of one? So I'll leave that to you. And if you want to use the calculator, calculator doesn't give you radical signs at the end. But if you come up with something you're not sure if that number is this, then you type that into a calculator. So you type in square root of 15 divided by 4 and see if your answer equals to this number. And the same applies for D. Now we have this question. A circle with an xy plane has a center 5, 7. It's asking you for the, the equation of the circle. If you remember the equation of the circle, remember this and remember what a b and r stand for then you can get this get the answer right away if you don't then no worries let's just plug and check math point two x minus five squared plus y minus seven squared equals four and we take a look at it is the center of the circle at five comma seven it is Radius 2. Does this circle have a radius 2 from the center? 1, 2. It does. So the answer is A. Easy. Okay, so another question on radius. I'll skip this one. And this is another question where if you use the calculator wisely, kind of like what I did for number 1, you can get the answer. So I'll skip that one too. Uh, same with this one. Um, Endpoints are the points on the circle when you draw the rate, the diameter. Um, I think these are pretty straightforward, so do those uh, with the help of calculator, and if you have any questions, let us know. And that's it for Math Point 14. Do two more sets of practices to make sure you get it, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye.